Hi there, my name's Conrad and this is uh, going to be a quick video explaining the concept of pre-multiplication. We're going to talk about what a pre-multiplied image is and how we go about creating one. Understanding pre-multiplication is important in compositing. It's a fundamental concept that's a big part of the most basic compositing operation, merging one image over another one. Luckily, the concept is pretty simple and it uses some very basic maths. When I first had the concept of pre-multiplication explained to me uh, during my first week of my compositing course at Escape Studios, uh, it really lit a light bulb in my head. Uh, I'd spent years using After Effects and I'd always wondered how it was possible to have a transparent pixel. I just assumed it was some complicated and proprietary coding and it was all kind of just magically done by software and that each piece of software did it differently. But once this was explained to me, it really blew my mind that it was not only so simple that I could understand it, but I could actually do the maths and calculate the resulting pixel values myself. Once I'd realized this, it meant I had the confidence to start trying to understand and troubleshoot other issues I faced that, uh, as I was learning compositing. And it made me realize that a lot of uh, what the software we're using is doing is uh, actually pretty straightforward. It's just doing lots of it fast. So in this video, I'm going to explain what a pre-multiplied image is and how we create one. And then in the next video, we're going to look at the steps Nuke goes through when we use a pre-multiplied image and place it on top of another image. So let's get started with pre-multiplication. In compositing, the transparency of an image is controlled by a mat. A mat is a single channel black and white image where the white pixels represent the area of the image that are fully opaque and the black pixels represent completely transparent areas. Gray pixels in between represent tra semi-transparency. A pre-multiplied image is an image that has had the mat applied to the color information and has the same mat included in the alpha channel. The mat can be generated multiple ways. It could be from rotoscoping, keying, or it could be generated by the render software if we're working with CG images. Once we have the mat, we need to apply it to the image. But before we do that, we need to understand how these black, white, and gray values are represented in the software. If you're used to working in Photoshop or After Effects, you might be used to seeing pixel values that range from 0 to 255 if you're working on an 8-bit image, or in After Effects, 0 to 32,768 if you're working in a 16-bit project. In these cases, 0 represents black, and the maximum number, either 255 or 32,768, represents white. If you're working in Nuke, or if you switch After Effects to 32-bit mode and you sample pixels, you'll see that 0 still represents black, but white is now represented by 1. And this is the same regardless of the bit depth of the image that you bring into the software. Representing the values from black to white as 0 to 1 makes what we're going to do next much easier to understand and follow. This 0 to 1 representation works for each color channel too. 0 in the red channel is no red at all, and 1 is full red. Same goes for the green and the blue channels. Now all we need to do is remember some primary school multiplication maths. If we multiply a number by 1, it stays the same, so 1 times 1 equals 1. If we multiply a number by 0, we get 0, so 1 times 0 equals 0. And if we multiply something by a fraction, we get that fraction of the original number. So 1 times 0.5 equals 0.5, and 0.5 times 0.5 equals 0.25. So you should now be able to see where we're going with this. So let's jump into Nuke and see how this works in practice. We're going to use these color bars uh, as our example. By default, the color bars max out at 0 0.05. So I've added a grade node so that the, uh, the maximum values are now 1. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at pixel values using the numbers down in the bottom right corner here of the viewer. You can see with my cursor over the red bar, the pixel values read 1 for the red channel, 0 for the green channel, 0 for the blue channel, and 0 for the alpha channel. If we hit A, you can see that there is no alpha channel uh, in this image at the moment. We're going to use this mat that I created earlier uh, to uh, pre-multiply these color bars with. If we look at the alpha channel of the map, we can see that I've created four distinct blocks of alpha channel, uh, of transparency. And if we look here, we can see that the top is one, so completely opaque. The second block down is 0.5. Uh, 
Sec the block down after that is 0.25, and then the lower block is black. It's completely transparent. Um, but that information is all in the alpha channel of our mat. So we need to take that information from the alpha channel of our mat, and we need to multiply these red, green, and blue values from our color bars by it. There are several ways we can do this in Nuke. Uh, the first way we're gonna do it is with a multiply merge node. So if we type in multiply and choose multiply merges, Nuke creates a merge node set to multiply. So we connect our mat to the A input and we connect our color bars to our B input. Now you can see here that the result is black. Now that's because the multiply node here is taking the red channel of the A and is multiplying it by the red channel of the B input. Um, and we know that there is no information in the red channel here. So we've got zero, so zero times anything is zero. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the alpha channel here and we want to shuffle it into the red, green, and blue channels. So each channel of our color bars is getting multiplied by the same thing. So we're gonna do shuffle. And with this new shuffle node, if you hold down command and drag, sorry, alt and drag, we can connect all four channels at once. So we're shuffling the alpha of, um, the alpha channel into the red, green, and blue. So now if we look here, we can see that the alpha channel and the red, green, blue channels are all the same. Now, if we look at the multiply node, we can see that we are multiplying these values from the color bars by these values from the mat. And if we look up here um, where the alpha channel is one, where our mat is one, we can see that these pixels are not changing value because we're multiplying them by one. And we know that one times one, sorry, we know, anything times one stays the same. So zero times one stays at zero, one times one stays at one. If we look at the next block down, we can see that the values are halving. Anything that was one before, the red channel over here is now 0.5. Anything that was zero is staying at zero. And the next block down, we are getting a quarter of our original values because our mat had a value of 0.25. So what was one? What was one here is now 0.25. And at the bottom, where the alpha channel or the mat is completely zero, we are getting rid of everything. So we are pre multiplying, oh, sorry, we are multiplying our colors by our mat. So this is almost a pre multiplied image, but we said at the beginning that a pre multiplied image had to have the mat included in the alpha channel. And if we look here, our alpha channel at the merge node is empty. That's because before the merge node, there was no alpha channel here. So we need to copy the alpha channel. So I'm gonna hit K for a copy node. And I'm gonna hold down shift to break it out as well. So now by default, the copy copies the alpha channel of the A input to the alpha channel of the B input. So now if we look here, we have the mat in the alpha channel and we have our color bars that has already been multiplied by the mat. So this is now a pre-multiplied image. Now let me show you a quicker way of setting that up with a that uses a few fewer clicks and is the way we'd probably do it whilst working. So we know that the alpha channel in this mat is already there. And we know that by default, the copy node just takes the alpha channel and copies it into the B pipe. So now we don't need to worry about the shuffle. We've got the alpha channel in the B pipe with our color images. Now, instead of using the multiply node to apply this, there is a node called premult. And now this premult by default takes the red, green, and blue and multiplies it by the alpha channel. So we put the alpha channel in the stream first and then use the premult node and we get the same result as we had before, but much quicker with far fewer clicks and using the default values of two nodes. This is how we'd usually set up a pre-multiplied image in Nuke while we're working. So let's recreate that pre-multiplication process, but using a more realistic image. We have here a photo of a bird, and we have a mat that's been created separately. 
Uh, the map was created partly with some roto and partly with some keying. Now, if we look at this map, we actually have the same information in the red, green, blue, and alpha channel. So it's already in the place we need it. Now, if we hit K for a copy node, we're going to copy the alpha channel from the A input, and we're going to add it into the B stream. So we look here, there's no alpha channel. We look here, we now have an alpha channel that matches the bird. So now that we've got the alpha channel in the B stream, we can use the pre-molt node to multiply the alpha channel that's now there with the red, green, and blue pixels that we had before. So now we've applied the mat to the image. Now let's look, zoom in and look at what's actually going on with these pixel values here. So let's pick a pixel here. I'm going to hold control and click and we get this pixel sample here. So we can see at this point, we have a red value of 0 0.024. We have a green value of 0 0.015 and we have a blue value of 0 0.018, and the alpha is one. So if we toggle before and after the pre-multiplication, we can see that those pixel values that are in red, green, and blue are staying exactly the same because we're multiplying those red, green, and blue values by an alpha value of one. Now if we go before the pre-multiplication and we sample a pixel over here, we have a pixel value of 0 0.05, 0 0.06, and 0 0.02. But we can see that the alpha value is zero. So if we go after the pre-multiplication, we can see that everything has become zero because we've multiplied the zero of the alpha channel by each of these channels here, and they have all become zero. Let's zoom into the edge here. If we hover over here, we can find a pixel that's about half, point five, one, three. So if we look here, before we do the pre-multiplication, we have a red value of 0 0.09, we have a green value of 0 0.08, and a blue value of 0 0.05. Now, the alpha channel, if we actually look at the copy node, the alpha channel is 0 0.05, 0 0.051, so nearly exactly half. So after the pre-multiplication, you can see that the red channel has gone from 0 0.09 to 0.046, which is almost exactly half. We've exactly halved it. The green value, which was 0 0.087, is now 0 0.045. And the blue, which was 0 0.045, uh, sorry, 0 0.054, is now 0 0.027. So you can see that when we've multiplied the color values by an alpha that is uh, fraction, so in this case almost exactly half, we've got exactly half of the values. And if we um, sample different areas here, we can see that we're going to have different proportions of the pre existing red, green, and blue depending on what the alpha channel was to start with. So now we have our pre-multiplied image uh, of this bird. We can render this uh, image out if we want. Um, we can render it out uh, with the alpha channel. And as long as we render out the red, green, and blue and alpha channels, and we choose a format that supports an alpha channel like um, an EXR or a TIFF or a PNG, we can render this image out as a pre-multiplied image and we can import it back into any application that supports pre-multiplied images like Photoshop, or After Effects, and we can use it as a pre-multiplied image with the transparency ready to go to merge over another layer. So now we have a pre-multiplied image and hopefully you understand how we got there. Now that we've got this pre-multiplied image, we can take it and just merge it over the top of another image. We can put it on a background and we're gonna get a composite. Um, in the next video, we're gonna look at how that over operation actually works, how we take the information from our pre-multiplied image and use that to create a composite. Uh, it's a very important step of compositing, obviously, like the most basic thing we can do really is put one object in front of another. And um, now that we have an understanding of this step, the next step's not gonna be much more complicated and we can hopefully get a good understanding of that too. If you have any questions uh, about this video, please let me know in the comments below and look out for my next video, thanks.